Hey, Jason here. Today's video, we're going to do part three of the wide point analysis. We're going to start digging into its financials. Before I get to that, though, I need to let you know you can get the series of the podcast and you're going to for free on all major podcasting platforms, Stitcher, Anchor, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and more. You can get this as part of the I Love Guy Messing podcast and you wear on the world for free. If you like this video or other videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. I release reviews all the time. Okay. Before we get to the disclaimer today, which again, I hate doing, I need to apologize. This video has taken um, a lot longer, longer than I expected. Um, I think FDA 992, 9992 uh, first requested this months ago, and then we've been analyzing it off and on since then. Um, we've been moving stuff around on our marketing calendar because we're getting to ready to really relaunch our master class. So that's why it's got pushed back. I apologize for that. I also apologize for this and what I'm about to do because I don't want to do it, but I have to do it because every time I don't, I get nasty comments. So this is for informational purposes only. And this is to help you become a better investor faster um, by showing you the process I take every time I look at a stock. In this case, in today's video, we're doing something different. We're doing actually going through the financials. So I'm going to show you so you can learn from it and do this kind of stuff yourself. What catches my eye? what does not catch my eye, what is not super important. I read these word for word, but I'm going to show you what catches my eye in both a good way and a bad way in the financials. So you can better read financial statements um, easier and faster. This will help you find invest better investments faster and help you discard crap companies faster because it helps you find red flags faster. Um, because of that, and because these videos are um, for last three, four, five months now, have been requested by viewers. I don't care about a company's future, even at this stage. This is now the, we're at the third stage of my analysis. First video we did um, the visual analysis. Second video we did the worksheet, which we're, you're about to see as a recap. Um, third stage is actually digging the financials. Still at this stage, I don't care about what the company's future is. I don't care what the CEO says it's going to do. I look for competitive advantages. I look for margin of safety. I look for red flags so I can avoid stuff. Um, all that kind of stuff. I don't short sell ever, so I don't sell. I don't um, make money on any top stock I talk negatively about. I also don't own any stock in a long position in any company I talk positively about. I'm doing this for your purposes or for you, so you to help you become a better investor faster. Why should you listen to anything I have to say? In the first nine years of my career, I produced average annual returns in the portfolios I, man I manage of 23.5% uh, per year on average. That puts me just behind the great Warren Buffett when he was at his Buffett Limited Partnership, um, when he produced 24.2% average annual returns in the first nine years of his career. And that legitimately makes me one of the best stock pickers in the world over the last nine years. I'm not saying any of that to brag. I'm just saying that to prove to you that I actually know what I'm talking about a little bit. Okay, so again, I apologize for that. Don't want to do it. Hate doing it. Let's see here. Which screen do we want? In... Let's do that for now. Check one more time. Oh, you're still on my face. Let's go. That would probably help. I was wondering where the screen was. There we go. I'm struggling today. I apologize. Okay, so here's a quick recap of the second stage of the analysis on white point. First stage went well. Um, looked like a good company with potential co competitive advantages. Um, uh, government contracts in the U.S. Um, those often come at higher margin and and or um, competitive advantages. Sometimes both. Um, they're growing. They that is not correct. I'm pretty sure that's a supposed to be a million. So that's a typo on my end. Checking on the other screen. Yes. So that was a typo on my end. They've gone down since. Um, this is the second time we analyzed them in June 17th. Again, I apologize for the delay on this. Um, they've gone down from the $65.5 million market cap the day I analyzed them on June 17th to now a $57.2 uh, million market cap as of this recording. And their stock has gone down 39.2% so far this year. Um, why? Does anybody know why? If you're familiar with White Point, what's been going on? I will research here, but I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, ba -ba -ba, manage it. 
So knit cap index, micro cap index, Microsoft contract. Were their quarterly results not great? So again, this is the exact process I go through anytime I see something like this. And yes, we will get to the looking through the financials. Um, but I would do this first. This margin up. So the revenue was down. That's most likely why, why they're um, they're down so far this year. The revenue was down. Might also have to, something to do with backlog, but we'll have to figure that out later. Hmm. Okay, so that answers that question. Side note, key ratios tab is apparently back on Morningstar. <laughs> this will make all of the analysis going forward better because the last couple were not as good because this information was gone. I don't know if they took it away. I don't know if they were working on some information. I don't know what's going on, but it's now back. So another side note, where to go to find their financials. Go direct. They used to be able to find them on Morningstar years ago. Um, they took that away. I don't know, again, I'm not sure why, but now you go to the website, which I have open over here. Investors. Um, usually there is a tab for um, annual reports, quarterly reports, stuff like that. I don't see one on this website. So you will have to, there you go, SEC filings. What we want here, we want, so what I read first is the most recent annual report that was in this is the proxy report this is the most recent quarterly so we want the next page we want this right here march 23rd why do i start off with this instead of starting off with the quarterly frankly <laughs> because i want to start with the longest thing first which is almost always the annual report. Um, that's what I do here. And so that's why I start with the annual. Um, frankly, they're, they're the most important, important financial statements as well because they are the only ones that are audited. Uh, most 10 Qs, I actually can't think of many 10 Qs that are audited by auditors. Um, proxies, I don't think those are audited. I'm honestly not sure. But on the left screen here, on this screen over here on the doc, here is my secret sauce for finding and evaluating great, great investments when I'm going through their, their um, financial notes. I'm showing you exactly what I do here. Secret sauce, massive sarcasm in that because it's not secret sauce. So <laughs> these three things, general info, things of note, risks. These three things are what I make notes on. That's it. I put three, or I put things into these three categories as I go through here. Um, and at, at times I may pause this um, because frankly it'll probably be a little bit boring for you to watch me going word for word through here. Um, but when I do see something, I will come back on and let you know because again, that can get quite boring. Okay, scroll about down to page three and four here. This is where we start getting into the cautionary notes. This, again, I read this word for word. I'm not going to here because that would bore you to death. Um, what is important to watch in here in the cautionary notes is stuff about COVID. If they are affected by COVID, how much we want to know how much by. Um, you see this a lot now in the risks category, um, frankly, because <laughs> it affected a lot of companies. So you want to know later, and we'll get to the actual notes where they talk about these in the risk section, um, what 
to watch for. And I should probably get the screen out of my way. There we go. Highly competitive market. Pretty much all these are, pretty much every company says stuff like this. Uh, technological changes. Okay, that's very common. We have significant fixed operating costs, which may be difficult to adjust in response to unanticipated fluctuations in revenues. That's important to note. Um, why is that important to note? Because, and I would put that probably in general info for now, I might move it to risk layer, uh, but I would move it to here now because if they had a, a lot of fixed costs, that means they constantly have to spend money on these costs to continue operating the business, growing the business, all that stuff. So something more of note here could be a risk later, but for now it's just something of note. This is important. We have had a history of losses when we may be unable to sustain profit profitability. That again, for now is general info Oops. that I want to know to make sure that our research later and again, this is why I use the annuals as well, because this stuff, a lot of this stuff is in the quarterly reports. They just give you the financials and kind of get in and get out. The annuals, they go into more details about the stuff. Um, so that's why I like the annuals as well. And plus reading the annuals. Um, so let's say, again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. We're only starting here. But let's say this happens. And White Point still looks like a great buy after looking at the financials. At the... Um, not the financials, the uh, annual report here. From there, I would then read the quarterly report, same stuff, proxy report, same stuff. If it meets that threshold, then I would read five to 10 years of annual reports to see what they've done over time. Um, and again, that's one reason I focus on the annuals as well, because you get more information, plus you get a kind of trend line over time, how they've operated, have they reached their goals, have they missed their goals, all that kind of stuff. This is related, that's important. This is related to government contracts and bidding. Again, more something of note for now. Keep doing that. But that could be a risk, or it is a risk, but it's not a huge risk yet. Okay, that's same thing, same thing. And I will say a note here, and this is what I tell my students. So I've been reading financials for 10, 15 years now. So things that I note may not be as important to you. For example, I'm not noting this because I grew up in an Air Force family around government contracts all the time. So I know this. If you didn't know this, this is something you'd want to note. The federal government contract contained provisions giving government uh, customers a variety of rights that are unfavorable to us. That line. I would put in notes if you didn't know that, but again, because I grew up in an Air Force family, I've known that. Okay. Get my screenshot tool. And I put this at the top just so I don't have to look for it every time I look for what the company does. We are a leading provider of trusted mobility management. TM2 that consists of federally certified communications management. We offer, we've gone over some of this in the first video, so I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. Again, don't want to bore you to death, but that is important to know in the general info. Um, so I can get it for my analysis later if I need it. Okay, scanning this for now. Again, normally you, you need to read, <laughs> again, I've been doing this 10, 15 years, thousands of, maybe tens of thousands of companies. I still read these word for word. Um, right now, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm just scanning these to kind of find major points of emphasis for you. Um, but what you should do is you should read them word for word as well, because especially as you're starting, not only to help you learn faster um, about industries, about economics, about um, the company, uh, potential competitive advantages, potential competition, all that stuff. Um, but you don't want to miss anything either. These I would all put in things of note. Or not things of note, general info, sorry. 
And yes, again, you can copy and paste these. And normally I do so I can search them. Um, I'm not doing that now because, again, that would <laughs> have a little bit of OCD when it comes to that. And I have to change the formatting and change the spacing and all that stuff. So I'm not doing that right now either. Okay, this is important. So I will highlight this because I'm going to highlight some various parts in here. And this is things of note. And see what I'm talking about with the formatting. Okay, so over here, what I would highlight from here This is a massive sentence. <laughs> okay, so I want to highlight this whole thing. Our sales cycle is long. Let's start there. What does that mean? That means that it takes them not only a while to get clients, but it also takes them a while once they are to find clients. Um, and that means it can lead to potential cash flow issues if, for example, one of their clients goes away and they can't replace them because their sales cycle is so long. Um, and I, I see that further down. It says 12 months. It could take more than 12 months to enter in a contract with a customer from the time we first actively engage them. Um, so that's what, <laughs> so last year, they would have had to be engaging with people this time last year to get a contract with them. Um, and that was during COVID. So, and government, this time last year, we were dealing with government stuff and lockdowns and um, worry about budgets. And so they may, that may be a huge reason why their revenue is down because it's now affecting them a year later. Um, so that line right there, I'd say the cycle is long. Those five words, super important. Affected by many factors outside of our control. Okay, but not limited to customer specific proposal and assets. So there's a lot of bureaucracy is a lot of what this stuff does, which again, I know because of being in, the, um, in a military family, there's a lot of bureaucracy and there's a lot of back and forth. Um, so that is something to note, U.S. federal government shutdowns. For those of you not inside the U.S., uh, for those of you outside the U.S., these come up, seems like every year, two, three years where the government and president and congress and senators and, um, are fighting back and forth about raising debt levels and spending too much money and not spending enough money and blah 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 and it's a government shutdown so a government shutdown would affect them is what that says okay it could take more than 12 months to enter any contract that's very important So this is also now the, I don't know how many times I've seen the words which are outside of our control. You'll see those here again, which I cannot copy and paste. That's a risk. That whole thing, it could take more than 12 months all the way down to outside of our control. Why do I view that as a risk? Because I want things to be in my control or in the company's control. A lot of the government stuff is not. Again, it's not a massive risk because I'm aware of it coming into government contracts, but it still is a risk. It still is something to know. This is interesting, but it's not necessarily important things of note risks. Um, they're transferring their business model slightly, or their sales model slightly from a direct sales model to a kind of partnership JV venture. <laughs> it's a good thing if it works, it's a bad thing. That's one of those things, it's a good thing if it works, it's a bad thing if it doesn't work. Okay, so. 
this into up here in general info. Again, scanning here. Internal sales for strategic partnerships. Okay, that's just talking about general sales and marketing stuff. More marketing stuff. Brand opening brand awareness. Market awareness, blah, 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 blah. Again, I have a background in marketing. Um, so if you do not, this may be important to you. To me, this is just kind of standard stuff, which is why I didn't note it anywhere. This is important. Specifically, this. Why is that important? Because they're talking about how most of their contracts are from the government, but they're trying to expand outside of that with commercial customers to broaden that. Um, again, that's uh, something of note. It's not a risk. That's Frankly, that's a good thing. Um, in my opinion. Uh, let's go over here. And you'll see this is getting pretty long already. We're up to three pages and, <laughs> of notes and we're only on page eight. Um, typically when I go through a company's annual, most recent annual, most recent quarterly, most recent proxy, I have anywhere between 20 and 40 pages of notes. Um, so that's the kind of in-depth research that I do. Again, that comes from doing this thousands, tens of thousands of times. Um, but that's how you get better at it as well. And that's why I'm going through this with you. If, even though I'm sure a lot of people are probably finding this boring. <laughs> and I'll probably save this kind of stuff for um, students in our master class because they enjoy it. They're, <laughs> we, and when I say we, I mean me and our students like this kind of stuff. Well, some of them. I wouldn't say they like it. I don't mind it. Um, but most people do not. Most professional investors do not read an annual report. Not even one. Um, by, so by just going through the first stage of the analysis, the visual preliminary, preliminary analysis checklist, the actual written worksheet, which is stage two, and then this stage, um, you gain a massive legal informational advantage over other investors just by doing this stuff, because most people, again, most professional investors don't even read these things. Worldwide contracts. <laughs> Okay, so these are important. These are some of their customers, or not really the customers, the contracts and who they're with. It's not really specific, like the department. Homeland Security, Health and Human Services. They can work with NASA, that's cool. This is important. This is um, a security clearance when you, um, I don't know if all military members have it, um, but many military members or people that do contracts with the government or the military either have to have a security clearance or they are highly encouraged to get a security clearance. Um, this is pretty much a necessary thing for especially what they do. <laughs> um, so 
if they didn't have this, that would be a massive red flag, obviously, because then they couldn't have the contracts. Or if there was something in here saying along the lines of, saying along the lines of, we have a security clearance, but it's ending, and we're either not going to renew it or we're not getting it renewed by the government entities, that would be a massive, gigantic business probably breaking security uh, issue for the company because especially since they are pretty much 100% right now dependent on security clearance or things that require security clearance. Migrate more cloud customers to the cloud in the future. They need to be secure. You can't get trouble and they can use contracts. IP. Okay, where's the actual IP? I'll probably say it later, but that's something to note. Not necessarily on the dock, but it's something to remember. We want to figure out their IP um, to try to put a value on it. Because that can, especially in this space, add an enormous amount of value to the company. This is interesting, <laughs> mainly because you pretty much never see companies take direct shots at other companies, ever. Like, literally, I don't think I've seen this. If I have, it's been a very long time. <laughs> Mind it. It's not a bad thing. Frankly, I think it can be a competitive advantage as well. Because if you are transparent in a, an arena that requires a lot of trust, that is, or it can be a massive um, competitive advantage because people, or, you know, people will see that and they may want to work with you. This is a competitive competitive advantage. Or potential competitive advantage. S costs to switch specifically. Can be high for a prospective customer even if they know their current solution is not working. So this can be a, I said, potential competitive advantage because if they have the customers, that means it's easier than, for them to keep the customers, which is a, called a switching cost competitive advantage. That's a massive competitive advantage. Um, Switching cost competitive advantage is one of the most powerful competitive advantages, in my opinion, because it means, typically it means companies have to do something either that's drastically less expensive and or about 10x better to get you to switch. So if WidePoint has these customers, that means it will be very easy or easier for them to keep the customers which will mean higher profits, revenues, blah, 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 blah. If they are working to get the customers, which I know they are, that could be a competitive disadvantage because it's harder for them to switch. But this is definitely something to note because this is what I brought up in the first video of potential competitive advantages for the company. That is a clear sign right there of competitive advantage. Again, or it could be a disadvantage depending on <laughs> their customers and stuff like that. Here's the word transparent. If I said above, that can be a competitive advantage. <sighs> More shots at at, uh, at uh, competitors. I like it. We do not view our services as a commodity. If a company has commodity products. Those typically do not have competitive advantages. Those typically lead to lower margins, lower revenue, and a quote-unquote race to the bottom in terms of 
ever lowering prices. They do not view their services as a commodity, which again is another sign of competitive advantages. And they directly point out here from there to there. And again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I can't really, <laughs> um, you should um, watch the YouTube video for this one. Um, and frankly, I didn't expect this, but you should read this or you should watch the YouTube video for this one um, because there's a lot of stuff I'm highlighting and showing on the graphics that I'm not able to, or that I'm not going to fully read because again, that would bore people to death. But there's more signs of competitive advantages right there, and they directly link them to their transparency and their pricing models and the shots they were taking above. Okay. So here's some of their direct competitors. We want that. And so why do I want this? Because if this analysis continues going well, then I would want to research the competitors um, to some degree. And that depends on the industry. That depends on if these are public versus private companies, um, stuff like that. But I would want to, I would want to research them to some degree if this continues going well. How long are we in here on this video? Okay. Well, I'm going to, unfortunately, I'm going to cut this video a little bit short here. We will pick up on page 12 next time, but I want to try to keep these to around 30 minutes. Um, again, mainly not to bore you <laughs> um, because again, I don't know this is my first time. I've done this with students before and they like it, but they're paying students and they want to learn stuff. So that's why they like it. I'm putting it on here on YouTube and the podcast to see if this is something people enjoy. If it is, I'll keep doing more of them. If it's not, and I'll just keep it for students. So um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I hope this has been helpful so far. I will make a part two, probably part three of this as well um, to continue going through this. Um, if you want me to look at a stock like this for you, I will do so. Um, if it reaches sta or if it surpasses stage one and stage two, like this one did, um, I will look at it for you. Anywhere in the world, I'll look at any kind of stock for you anywhere in the world, as long as it meets three criteria. It's not a bank because I don't evaluate banks. It's not a um, it's not an insurance company because you actually have to dig into the 10Ks and the end reports like this um, to analyze those, and it has to be generating revenue. Why does it have to be generating revenue? Because at the first stage of my analysis, I look for margin of safety, margins, uh, metrics, profitability, balance sheet strength, stuff like that. If the company isn't producing revenue, doesn't have those things. So, and I have done some of those analysis and they are quite boring because I have nothing to talk about. Because again, what I said at the beginning that I don't care about future stuff at this stage. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, thanks so much. Um, oh, actually, let me back up. I wasn't finished my thought. If you, if the company meets that, those three criteria, let me know a stock below. Let me know its name. Let me know its ticker and I'll look it for you. I'll add it to the calendar and let you know in the comments below. I am giving preference to masterclass students now that we're re getting ready to relaunch that and starting to get students in. Um, I am going to give preference on the calendar to paying masterclass students for this. But I will still look at your video. If you're not a paying masterclass student, um, I'll just give preference to the students. If you're listening on YouTube, thanks so much. Um, like, love, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And make sure if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I release a new video. I release new videos all the time. If you're listening to all the podcasts. Again, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Um, make sure we'd really appreciate it if you do all that same stuff. But on the podcast, we'd also really appreciate a review as well because the more re reviews, views, and listens we get to our content, the more people we can help. If you're looking for more specific help on how to become a better investor faster, we have free resources below this, including our five free gifts where you can get the full worksheet that I was talking about a couple times. Um, you can get that as part of five free gifts. You can also get a free PDF copy of my book, How to Value Invest. You can also get a free copy of our guide, Seven Tips to Picking Great Stocks and Three Times You Must Sell. You can get all three of those resources for free at the links below. If you're looking for more specific help from me on how to become a better investor faster, make sure to check out our newly relaunched masterclass. We haven't even officially relaunched it. We're re relaunching it officially on August 3rd, but we've already started getting students in. 
So if you want to be in on those, um, if you want more information about the masterclass, make sure to check out the link below as well. But until next time, have a great day. Talk soon.